Hello! I was gonna do my normal greeting, but obviously I'm not passing up this opportunity. Ah, celebrities. Not only do they have the monopoly on fabulous red carpet events I'll never be invited to, destination weddings and places that I'll never be able to find on a map, and idiosyncratic baby names that if you were to use would get little aerosol laughed right out of pre-K. But now, they're coming for our beauty budgets too. Today I want to talk about celebrity-owned beauty brands. The beauty industry has its own kind of celebrities, obviously, many of which have reached a very admirable level of success, selling out launches, filling up malls for meet and greets, and ranking in millions of dollars. So who, pray tell, is actually surprised in any shape, way, or form that celebs are trying to weasel their way in on this? Some of you guys might actually be very put off by the idea of an influencer-owned beauty brand, but for me, that idea completely tracks and makes all the sense in the world. As a beauty guru, you are spending the entirety of your career testing, trying out, working with, developing, product and makeup like that is your bread and butter that is what you do you're creating like best sellers and cult classics out of product lines that you are basically working for and you're working for nameless faceless million and billion dollar companies so like why wouldn't you cut out the middleman and start your own line this this makes all the sense in the world to me like i said that don't mean i'm buying any influencer owned beauty brands don't get me wrong but i see that that seems like a natural progression to me but celebrity owned beauty brands I have little to 0, 0.000 interest in. Now to be fair, I am just not a big celebrity person. Like I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know who they're dating. I'm not watching E! News. I'm not watching the red carpets. I'm not checking for tabloids. I don't know what any, I don't know. This is just like something I've never cared about really. I don't stand anybody except for like maybe Beyonce and I still am not gonna buy anything just because she makes it. So definitely keep that in mind throughout the process of this video and go ahead and don't get offended if I don't love who you love or don't buy from who you buy from. Like this is not a, an indictment of you as a person or even the celebrities in question. We're really just here to kind of sit back look at things and go, huh, that's really what I like to do more than anything. I just want to look at things, talk about it, see what we think about it. Is it good? Is it bad? Most of the time it's right there in the middle and it's all going to be very dependent upon your personal preferences and your choices. So like, let's keep it light and friendly, shall we? I just want to remind you guys before we get started, check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Come hang out with me on Patreon. Thumbs up the video if you like this and want to see more content like it. Subscribe if you are new here. And if you are not new here, hey, what's up? How's your mom and him? And yeah, let's just get started. So the first thing I want to discuss is why is this happening? Why are celebrities doing this at all? Why does it work? Celebrities endorsing products is nothing new and it has been a match made in profit earning heaven for both parties for decades now. I did a video a couple of months ago, I think. I will link it down below and up here, all about parasocial relationships. So since I've already spoken about this, I don't wanna go too in depth on that subject, but I will just like quickly gloss over what we're dealing with. The idea is this. People do not really connect with inanimate objects, but they do connect with other people. So if you are able to take a public figure that is well-loved, popular, whatever, and closely align it with this inanimate object, you're basically able to capitalize off the audience that the public figure has. And then because the viewer sees their public figure, celebrity, whatever, as a friend, they take this endorsement at face value. They say like, this person's recommending this. I'm going to buy it because I have a relationship with them. That is my friend. Now, when I say it like TLDR status like that, it just kind of seems like, well, duh. So definitely check out my other video if you want to further understand the mechanisms of this and how often it is used and how it works on pretty much everybody. Marketing is all about emotions, all about stirring up emotions in someone and kind of that, aww feeling that you get surrounding a certain franchise or once again a celebrity is really just an opportunity for a brand or the celebrity themselves to capitalize off of that emotional reaction that parasocial relationship not to mention there's the other added benefit of the fact that with celebrities we hold them in such high regard and we look at them as kind of like pillars of wealth and success and beauty so anything that they like 
we just assume must be better than anything else in that same category. So I think there's like two different types of celebrity endorsements. As far as I know, I made these terms up myself, but I feel like you have reminder endorsements and then you have awareness endorsements. And then a reminder endorsement is something that people are already buying, people are already aware of the function of and the existence of. So like a good example of this would be something like Britney Spears and Pepsi in the early 2000s. Like people already knew what Pepsi was, people already knew what it did, what it was for, how much it cost, why you would probably be drawn to buying it, like i.e. you like sugary soda. So Britney really wasn't introducing this brand new concept by attaching herself to this brand at that time. She was just giving Pepsi a new audience to get in front of. Britney at the time was like the biggest celebrity on the friggin' planet. I don't think we'll ever have another famous person that was as famous as Britney back in the early 2000s. But that was like a young, hip, I don't know, I hate when I say that. But it was, it was like the young, hip crowd. It was like the teens, it was the kids. It was Pepsi trying to appeal to a younger generation, now ostensibly doing that because that guarantees lifetime customers. But nonetheless, that is kind of what I consider a reminder. You didn't watch a Britney Spears and Pepsi commercial and be like, Pepsi, what's this? Then you have what I call like awareness in that without the celebrity, you might not even be aware that this thing existed at all. And by extension, you might not even sort of understand where certain brands get off charging what they charge for said item. So let's say you lived under a rock and you had no idea that anyone ever in their right mind had ever or would ever pay $4,000 for a purse. And at some point in all of our lives, that was the case, unless you grew up like insanely wealthy. But I'll never forget the first time I ever heard that purses were sold for that type of money. I didn't even know that was a thing. That was banana, same thing with makeup. I'm sure there was a time for a lot of you, especially if you're not these youngins, where when you first found out about like Sephora and Mac, you were like, what? I cannot afford to pay $12 for one eyeshadow. Celebrities aligning themselves with brands like this and the, the brand itself almost rising to prominence because of its proximity to the celebrity is nothing new at all. And it's almost like meant to be, if you think about it. Like there's entire pieces of clothing that people wouldn't even know about if celebrities didn't align themselves with it. Like Cardi B and those Balenciaga sock shoes. Like I didn't know what that was until I heard that in her song. I still think they're ugly as shit, but I didn't even know it existed. And it's kind of like, like for me, for example, I want a Chanel bag so bad. I cannot stand it. I see them and I get all a quiver in my nether yeah yeah. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. Like I, oh, they're so beautiful. Now, even though I am completely aware, completely aware intellectually that it is stupid, nonsensical, pointless, all of the above to spend three to $5,000 on a purse. But even still, I can't help it. I want one so bad. Now. Is that because I love Chanel bags because I just think they're beautiful pieces of wearable art or somewhere down the line through exposure to celebrity culture and celebrity and product placement and kind of the highfalutin of it all, did it get into my head that no matter how ridiculous that three to $5,000 price tag is, it still seems like money well spent because I want it so bad. You know what I'm saying? But obviously celebrity and beauty, the beauty industry are a very, very good fit as well. When I say this stuff out loud, you might find yourself sitting back and being like, well, duh, Whitney, but I'm not a puppet on the string. This shit doesn't work on me. And while to an extent, yes, that may be true, there is so much so much research and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of market research and testing that is done that would heavily disagree with you. It happens for a reason because it works. Celebrity affiliations with products bring in money, which brings me to my next point, which is why now? Why are they doing this now? Why is this popping up so much right now? I've said this before, but I would truly love to find some sort of graph <laughs> out there that depicts the rise of social media, particularly Instagram, with the amount of money that is being spent on the beauty industry. And that would encompass all things, you know, hair, makeup, 
skincare, procedures, all of those things. I guarantee you they are rising in tandem with each other. Obviously the beauty industry has always been a thing, but selfie culture and the normalization of perfection from normal people versus a celebrity highly contributes to this in my opinion. Beauty gurus have kind of been leading the charge here. They've been showing us how to be more beautiful in a way that was much more accessible and realistic because they were just real people just like us. Like celebrities are untouchable. We don't even sort of see a point in trying to compete with, live up to, measure up to a celebrity. But a girl sitting on her floor in Iowa talking about lip gloss, like that is something we can sink our teeth into. That makes sense to us. I guess what I'm trying to say is Beauty gurus came out here, warts and all, under the bad lighting, before the lip jobs and the teeth jobs and before the filters and before the fillers, and they taught us how to be pretty. And celebs, the whole time, will sit there, look you straight in your face and be like, I've never had any work done. Like, come on, girl. We all know. Like, that is kind of the difference. Like, Beauty gurus showed you how to do it and celebrities have always made us feel like they're just born that way. So that is a big part of why beauty guru marketing is so successful. It just kind of puts in, in place this idea that like anyone can look like this with just the right amount of money. And if you don't believe me that we are finally starting to equate wealth with beauty and not some sort of natural God-given gift, then explain to me all of those memes that are out there that are like, you're not ugly, you're just broke. Like, it is so interesting to me now how aware of that concept we are, almost to the point where we celebrate it a little bit. But celebrities have just kind of always kept themselves out of that conversation. Beauty gurus kind of had a grassroots, like starting from the bottom, now we're here, taking it to the streets with the bad lighting and trying to figure out the editing and try to understand the ununderstandable. Like, doing this job is fun, but it is so much work, not just because you have to film, edit, upload, create content, but you have to figure out how to do all those things. We don't have teams of people when we start out teaching us anything. You know, beauty gurus didn't come in, for the most part, I can't think of really any exceptions, beauty gurus didn't come into their position in the community uh, off the back of another project. You know, they didn't have hit TV shows and modeling campaigns with Calvin Klein. like they developed their following and, and as a result, their money and their reputation strictly off of the work they put into the beauty space and the beauty space alone. They're the ones who have taught all of us how to use products, where to buy products, which products are good products, which products are bad products. Most of us would still probably have no idea how to do a winged liner without them. Like it's a very hands-on, job in terms of like direct relationship with beauty and with beauty enthusiasts. Like you're not going to have a channel dedicated to beauty if you're not using, working with, and involved in beauty in some capacity. I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. Beauty gurus have paid their dues. Literally, you guys have no idea how much money it costs just to do this and the amount of time that you have to do it for free, not even for free. In a lot of cases, you're gonna start off paying to do this for a long ass time before it pays off, if it ever does. It's a hard job. It's hard to navigate a type of job that is like the Wild West. It's constantly changing. It's also really hard to grow a platform in social media now, even more so than it was like six, seven years ago because it's so saturated and noisy. The production value um, baseline, just what is like minimally acceptable is so much higher than it was several years ago. Like it's just, it's rough in these streets, man. It's not easy at all. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the beauty industry hasn't been profitable before beauty gurus, certainly not. I always bring this up because I heard it one time and I found it very fascinating, but I was watching Shark Tank one time and the sharks were listening to a pitch from somebody who was creating a product that was a beauty product. And one of the sharks, I wanna say it was uh, Mark Cuban. I wanna say it was Cuban. He was like, I'm listening, I'm interested in what you're telling me right now because cosmetics are crazy. The only place that the, mar the profit margins are higher is in the drug industry. Like there is so much money to be made selling beauty and makeup. It makes no sense. We all know this by now. 
you can take a lipstick that a brand probably paid all in four dollars to create and they're charging you 45 50 60 bucks for it and because it is a product that you will run out of and it is a product that they can convince you, you need multiple of it's just it's good business man it's good business to be in so honestly celebs getting their grubby little mitts in here a kind of irritates me as like maybe kind of like a gatekeeper or a purist in this space because like we weren't seeing hide nor hair of you guys until y'all wanted to come in here and sell us something but at the same time it's not like this hasn't happened before the last inception of celebrity involvement in beauty that we saw to this level used to be perfume everybody had perfume back in the day but now we're doing beauty that's the new thing and here's the deal with everything there is an exception but the exception truly only proves the rule. But for the most part, a celebrity's involvement with a product that they're the face of is so much smaller than you guys think. For most people, building a brand from the ground up, yes, including beauty gurus, like I said, I'm not saying I would patronize any of them. There's not any particular beauty brands or excuse me, beauty influencer brands out there I'm drawn to whatsoever, but they truly started from the bottom. They had to build their audience like from the ground up, slowly but surely, bit by bit, constantly working in the beauty space before they even got the chance to launch a brand, period. So when celebrities come in and do it, I don't know, man, I'm just not buying it because the things that make a brand successful are things like making a business plan, developing infrastructure, hiring teams, meeting with labs, formulating product, handling logistics, designing ad campaigns. These are all parts of owning a beauty brand and the smaller you are when you start, the more hats you're gonna have to wear. If you can come into owning a brand and you walk in with enough money, you can outsource every single solitary bit of that. So your role in this might be of the conceptual nature, like you might have a vision for something, but I don't feel like that is in any way like a labor of love or something unique to you and your creativity. You had people who did all that for you. Just my opinion. Now, there's also a difference between a celebrity owned brand, um, celebrities that are the faces of brands that are owned by bigger houses and a celebrity endorsement. All of them require different levels of involvement from the celebrity, but the point is, the celebrity's involvement is crucial to the success, otherwise the celeb would not be involved at all. So I guess my point here isn't so much that a celebrity makeup brand would automatically be bad, that we shouldn't be buying from them, that they're wrong. I just think, as always, it doesn't hurt, I've said it a thousand times, to figure out what is motivating our choices. Why are we buying from a celebrity brand over another brand. Why is that happening? So now that we kind of talked about how celebrity endorsement endorsements work, um, why they're getting in now, let's talk a little bit about who's getting into it and kind of the vibe or, or, or what we, what I think, I guess, about some of the brands that are coming out and what, what actually confuses me here. I cannot understand, period, some people's involvement in the beauty community at this point. Like, why some brands make sense to us and some brands do not. So a good example of this is Selena Gomez recently announced that she is starting Rare Beauty. And I think that has been one of the times in recent beauty history that well, that announcement came out and people were like, huh? Because like when Rihanna did it, people were stoked. And when Lady Gaga announced she was doing, that seemed like it made sense. That tracked for a lot of people. But why? You know, why does it make no sense for Selena Gomez to do this? But it does make sense for Lady Gaga to do it. Like they both wear makeup for their jobs. They both are beauty and fashion icons and in, in their own ways and in, in certain circles and they both work in film and in music and they both kind of do the same thing definitely some of them are better at it than others but uh what makes us want to buy from one celebrity's line over the other one why do people immediately embrace the idea of gaga having a line more so than they're embracing selena i know selena has people who are excited about it but the overall tone of this i'm trying to tell you has been kind of like, what, huh? Is it because Lady Gaga is so much more overt with her choices? Like her makeup is so avant-garde and out there and we more closely synonymize glam and makeup with Gaga over Selena? That might track, except 
Gaga's line does not sell that type of, of, of makeup. Like even the packaging, I was really surprised. Like I, I first time ever clicked on her line to check it out. I couldn't look at Selena's line yet because the only thing you can find is just quotes about how you're fine just the way you are. Uh, but we're a beauty brand to improve, improve upon you. I have so many thoughts about that. I'm gonna do a whole video about that type of marketing campaign. It's very interesting to me, this idea of like, we're all beautiful, buy my bronzer. I don't understand that. But anyway, Gaga's packaging, her entire line, if I didn't know Lady Gaga owned it or was the face of it, I don't even know what her actual affiliation with this is. I would have no idea because it's so pedestrian for what I would have expected, for what would have made sense for someone like her to get into beauty. And I think that's kind of what's interesting, isn't it? Like for all the money and all the past success that we have seen come from celebrities getting involved in the beauty industry, it's very interesting that it is not a one size fits all path to success. Just ask Bella Thorne. She tried to do this, it went horrible from what I understand. Like it ain't just anybody can come up here and have a beauty line. But like what determines the success? Do you know what I'm saying? Like. Is it the celebrity themselves that are attached to it? Is it the, the individual branding story that that celebrity brings to it? Is it the size of that person's fan base? Is it how relevant they currently are in the public eye? Or is it the actual efficacy of the products themselves? I would be willing to argue that the product itself is not really what's driving the interest whatsoever. We're just willing to accept less from celebrity brands as a whole. Like in the case of House Labs and KKW and Kylie, who I always feel like I'm ragging on. Like they're just my go-to examples because they're some of the biggest and in my opinion, some of the most lackluster, least interesting product lines out there for how successful they are and how expensive they are for what they are. I look at those brands and I don't see a new need being met or I don't see a new demographic or niche being catered to. Certainly don't see innovative products or packaging in any capacity. And once again, that's not an indictment of them as people. I'm just talking about the inanimate objects they put their name on to get money from us. You know, some celebrity brands are trying to bring something new to the table like uh, Jessica Alba's, what is it called? Honest Beauty? I know very little about that brand, but I do know the whole point behind it is like chemical free, vegan, cruelty free. It's got something going on there. Like they have an angle at the very least. And then like Fenty, even though a lot of their products necessarily mind blowingly better than other similar products on the market, they at least did something different. You know, coming out the gate with all those shades was super impressive and interesting. And then like, Millie Bobby Brown's line, she's trying to target a demographic that I don't know if anyone was really messing with before, which is like teens and tweens. Not everyone's gonna be innovative in this space. And the question is, as long as there's a celebrity attached to it, does it have to be innovative? Does it have to be interesting? Is all that matters is that you know that it exists and then you're more likely to buy it? I feel like a lot of successful beauty brands ran by celebrities or even the brands that are on their way out that are coming to us soon are completely relying on a type of makeup that I call merch makeup, which basically refers to a makeup or beauty line that is like, it's just merch. Just like if they were selling t-shirts or toasters, like you could buy a toaster with Cardi B's face on it and it might toast to bread just fine, but like, is it actually better toast at all? So yeah, you guys, these are just my thoughts on this. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no good or bad. It truly is just a conversation I wanted to have. And I know there's a lot of people out there who kind of subscribe to the attitude of like, well, I don't care who makes it as long as it's good makeup, but like what's making you even pick it up to try it? Is it a celebrity? Let me know what goes into your buying choices around this. Do you think this is interesting and kind of fun? Or are you like me? And the second you attach a celebrity to something, you're about 80% less likely to buy it. I just wanna know what we all think about this. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far into this rambly ass video, you might as well subscribe. Obviously, you like what you see. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me today. As always, I like us all the patrons. I'm getting ready to do some polls over there in the next couple of days. I don't know when this video is going up. So by the time this video goes up, the polls might've already been started. 
and weighed in on. But typically I take a temperature check in the beginning of the month to figure out what we want to see. A lot of times it is a true crime and makeup time video, which I'm always down to do. I think they're so fun, but maybe we'll do some vlogs or some story times or a book club or something like that. I'm, that's what I love about Patreon. We get a little more creative, do a little bit more different types of content than I do over here. And uh, as always, there's going to be live streams over there in the month of May, which one of my favorite things in the world to do. What can I say? Other than that, I truly hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing day. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.